yes, we're going to get them legalized. Welcome back, guys. I have a couple of questions about the situation of e-scooters. I'm sure you have lots of questions. I'm going to ring to one of our subscribers. He is an expert in the e-scooters in the UK. Thank you for your support if you already subscribed to my channel and thank you for any comments and any reaction you have after watching this. Let's ring. Hello Ash, Dimitri here. Hello Dimitri, how are you doing? Very well, nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Let me introduce guys, this is Ash, CIO of Shadow Works. That's right. Um, Shadow Works Party, we're a small e-bike development workshop in North London. We're not big, we're not, we're not smart or anything like that. We are just a small workshop that helps build custom e-bikes for people. Historically, though, I've been involved in electric cargo bikes and the rollout of electric cargo, cargo bikes in the courier industry. Um, and I consider electric cargo bikes still um, micro transportation anyway. Today, we are going to ask you a couple of questions about the situation with e-scooters. You know, it's confusing for everybody. Most of the people don't even know they are illegal. What do you know about the current situation with electric scooters in the UK? Okay, I mean, let me start off by saying I'm not against the legalization in any way. I'm actually pro it. However, I think we need to really manage people's expectations of what is going to be and what is going to be allowed. Historically, the problem we have is the 1977 Moped Act, which states a moped for a 16-year-old who has a, dri a provisional driving license should be 250 kilograms cur curb weight, have a maximum CC of 50, sorry, maximum cubic capacity of 50 cc's, and be limited to 30 miles an hour. E-scooters should fit somewhere just below that. Um, and I, I think, yes, we're going to get them um, legalized probably by Easter next year, hopefully. What we're not going to get is, one, um, they're not going to be anywhere near um, the, the moped capacity um, or moped um, speed limit, um, because that would just invalidate the actual moped classification. And two, we're never going to get them to be allowed to ride on pavements ever. Um, that's not going to happen. So as long as we stick to those things, we're going to have a 15.5 mile an hour e-scooter. And it's going to be, I would say, unlike an e-bike, which is 250 watts um, nominal uh, or constant, um, I think they're going to be about 350 watts because they don't have the advantage of pedal assistance. Um, all this nonsense of these 18 whatever acts um, not riding on the carriageway or whatever, um, they're a red herring. Um, no e-vehicle is ever going to be allowed to ride on a pavement. I'll get, I mean, you know, as I've stated if on the um, latest um, Electroheads blog, um, I, I, my daughter was hit on a pavement and hospitalised with three broken ribs and a mild concussion, even though she was wearing a helmet by an e-scooter rider hit, hitting her on the pavement. Um, I still want them legalised despite that. Um, and even this morning, I was on the school run on my cargo bike with my daughter, um, just coming down North Hill Road in Highgate, and a, an Uber delivery um, rider on an e-scooter ploughed into a group of um, my, my daughter's school friends and parents. Um, but I still want them um, e e legalising. I just don't want them riding on the pavements. I can't see any reason for it. Um, but we just need to manage expectations. We're going to get them legalised. They're going to be 15.5 miles an hour, the same as e-bikes and they will be about 350 watts. Let me ask you a question in regards riding on the pavements. There is a myth that if you ride the electric scooter on the pavement, you get not as much fine as for riding on the road. Is this true or not? It's not true at all. Um, you're basically, until they're legalized, you are riding an electric moped as the um, 1977 Moped Act. Um, therefore, you're riding a motor vehicle on the pavement. Um, it makes no difference. So you will step, the police can and have given six points to people for riding on the pavement on an e-scooter. So that's, that's a complete and utter myth. So people should not ride the scooters, not only on the roads. They should not ride them anywhere except the private land with the owner permissions. Is this correct? That's the law, yes. I, and, and any scooter shop selling them should be warning 
And I think they've been, most of them have been contacted by the police to tell people to warn them. And I think personal electric transport warns people that these are not for use on public roads. People are on the road, um, that's their own concern. It's when they go on the pavement where their children present and having seen my own daughter mowed down by one, I, I, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think you're gonna find any policeman or politician you ask is going to say that they are. it is ever a good idea or it will ever happen. I was speaking with David Davis from PACT, um, the government's road safety organization, and this is a big concern they're having as well. They're, so they're at the moment commissioning surveys into um, how many people are actually riding e-scooters on pavements at the moment, um, in, and checking that against how many people are actually riding bicycles on pavements. And um, the findings thus far are quite staggering because it's like, I think at one spot, there was 187 people in two hours riding e-scooters and 17 riding bikes, bicycles. Um, it seems to be very disproportionate in all the research that's coming out. So, and to the fact that they're never gonna be legalized on the pavement anyway, neither are e-bikes, neither do I, you know, as somebody who builds and sells e-bikes, I wouldn't want to see e-bikes on the pavement because they could be a massive hazard. Something like my cargo bike, if that was on the pavement, it, it could do colossal damage and may probably even kill a child. So I wouldn't do that. It's just not a good idea. Um, and some of these high powered e-scooters that are actually faster than a, a standard 50cc moped, you know, it's some of them like on the personal electric transport side, they're, they're 50, 60 miles an hour. Well, that, you know, if, 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 if somebody's getting chased by the police and they get on the pavement and then they hit a child at 50 miles an hour, well, that's the de child dead. I, I mean, I, I care. As somebody who teaches cycling, um, and have done for a long time, um, I, I care about children's lives and the pavement is where the children walk and do what they do. I understand. Thank you for your answers. There is a question why you can rent the scooter now but you cannot ride your own one. I think it's mainly because of um, policing it at this moment in time during the actual, um, the trial. When they created the new cl temporary classification for e-scooters, they had to have some way of policing it and having insurance in case anything went wrong. Um, and it was impossible to, for pe people to get insurance on private e-scooters at the time. I'm sure once they're legalized, people will be able to get insurance anyway. Like I have fully comprehensive insurance on my e-bike. In, in the short term, I think that was the idea to make it easier to enforce anything that went wrong on it and to maybe stop the government having any liability issues if, if an accident did happen during the trial. Um, but however, I think once they're legalized after Easter, touch wood, um, there'll be 15.5 miles an hour, 350 watts, as I've said before, um, and I think that you will probably be able to get insurance on them. And I think it's a temporary thing. It's just a way of assessing it in the short term and any problems without having issues in enforcing or policemen. Um, and also it was a way of making sure we don't get these high powered scooters out, out there. Um, and people will think they're, they're, they're legalized because they're not. It's di and they are, will be difficult to enforce. And I'm still wondering how the government is going to stop people riding the high powered stuff on the road um, because that's going to be a big difficulty and you know i can't in all honesty i still can't see why a lot of these shops are selling 30 40 50 mile 50 60 mile an hour scooter why they're selling them what purpose they have in the uk because they're never going to be legalized they are that power and speed is never going to happen um, and it should you hit a child and kill it on one of those vehicles, they'll throw the book at you. And I don't think it's a good idea. I think personal electric transport should actually start just going, right, we're gonna just sell the ones we think are gonna be legalized and that people won't have to buy another scooter at the end of it. That would be a better idea. And I think a lot of shops should follow suit on that. You know, keep it to the 15.5 miles an hour and 350 watts. Um, mirroring sort of the trial scheme for now in your sales. I think that would be a great idea, but I don't think it'll happen. Also, in the comments, we, we can see often when people recommend to run away. I don't agree with this opinion. What do you think about that? What happens if um, uh, the e-scooter well, riders it, doesn't their, stop? Their choice. Um, and on some of these scooters, I think the police might have quite a lot of difficulty catching them if they're a 60-mile-an-hour scooter. Um, but one, 
I think it's very unsafe because you're not going to be considering young children and people in front of you. And if you hit somebody at 60, you are going to do a lot of damage to them. But plus, the police have dash cams and videos every time. And the police are involved in the, in the government's consultation for e-scooters. Every time somebody does that or they, they video somebody acting like a clown, along with all the other people who are videoing stuff and submitting it to the consultation, which people don't realise that's going an ongoing thing, um, it's a mark against us getting them legalised in the long run. You know, it, it just proves that, that people can't be trusted to ride the correct vehicle um, when they're legalised. So I think that goes against us getting them legalised. And, and as a, somebody who teaches cycling and road safety, I don't think it is a good idea to do it because you could cause another accident or, or kill or um, give life changing injuries to a, to a minor or a, a very young child like my five year old. You know, if just a quick hit on the pavement caused her three broken ribs and a mild concussion and she was wearing a, a, a regulation cycle helmet, which the handlebars went into, had she, uh, the doctor said, had she not been wearing that, she would have been she could have had serious brain damage or died. So, you know. That's what we have to try and stop. We, you know, these people who are, you know, it, it can't be the Wild West. It has to be regulated like mopeds. And I think the government will, will eventually have to find some way of identifying the moped, the e-scooters e to the police as they're riding around and that they're legal. I'm not sure how they're going to do that, but it, it, it'll only take three or four deaths of young children on the, um, by e-scooters on the pavement to put a kibosh on all of this. So I, I say, you know, it's your choice, but. I would advise against it. And I think it's a very dangerous thing to do um, to try and elude the police on a vehicle with very small wheels on very potholy roads. I know another myth. If you don't have any driving license, you don't get points. But I know this is a myth. Could you please clarify what happens if the person stopped for riding an electric scooter without a driving license? Yeah, a lot of people believe that if you don't have a driving license, you can't be given points. Um, not true at all. If you don't have a driving license, they'll stop you. They'll issue the points via the DVLA. And when you apply for your driving license, the DVLA will have kept them nice and safe for you. And they'll be there. And the, the period of time, so say it's a year you've got those points for, um, it'll start from the moment you actually get your provisional license. Um, so you can't escape it that way. Um, and we need to bear in mind that six points for not having insurance um, can affect your chances of getting insurance on another motor vehicle down the line. Um, you know, if you're a newly, if, if you haven't qualified as a driver yet, you apply for your license, there's six points on there. When you come to go to your insurer, they're going to see your conviction. They're going to see what it was for because they, ha they you have to declare it. And they're going to say, right, we're going to put your, 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 your premium in your, up on your insurance because of this. So, you, you know, it, it, and a young person who's like seven, 16 or 17 wanting to get a moped, it could actually exclude them from getting insurance on it, which I don't think is fair, really, because we're not warning kids of this um, and there's not enough information about it to get to them. I try to any kids I'm working with, I try to tell them this. A lot of them tell me it's rubbish and won't believe me. But trust me, ask a policeman or a, a lawyer or anybody else. They'll tell you it's true. Uh, six points on your driving license. Yeah. Friends could find. Yeah. Big procedure. Uh, not in accordance with a driving license. No MOT, Triple no tax. Uh, when that gets seized, if you want to take it back, it's 150 quid a day and recovery charge. Thank you for your answers, Ash. There is a comment from the subscriber. Okay. There is a crackdown on e-scooters in central London. All on one is risky for e-scooters now. Uh, do you have any information? Do you know anything about crackdowns happening now? Um. The crackdown um, is in progress. I know last month they did, they, they see, it's, it's been going up steadily. Um, a lot of this is due, from what I've been told, to officers requiring more training because it's very, I mean, it is a complicated subject. When you look at them, you don't know quite what is what, and a lot of police officers didn't. Um, but there is a clamp, crack, crackdown coming. This, what we're in at the moment, is the training phase. Um, from July, um, I think it's the, the, they're going to be stepping up from July the 5th. I mean, last week alone, I think they seized 400. But if they're doing that now, um, I don't think, you know, I think they're aiming for 300 a week through July and August, 300 seizures and convictions. 
Um, I think that's going to start to put a lot of people off. Um, and I think you'll see less and less e-scooters on the road. And I think you'll see less sales as well at the moment until people know what format they're going to be legalized in. And they're just going to wait till they know, right, I can go into this shop, I can buy an e-scooter and it's legal. Um, and I'm not, I don't have to worry at all. Um, so yeah, it's coming. And what we've seen is bad, but I don't think it's, a, what, what the, I think we're going to see worse over the summer. Um, and I particularly worry about the um, protest this Saturday, where I know we're going, you said we might meet up when we go along. So we'll try and do a video there. Um, because we're doing some work um, for the consultation videoing anyway. Um, but I know the police are going along to that and they will be booking people. I really hope it doesn't turn into a riot or violence erupts or anything like that, because that doesn't serve our case either. Um, as I said, I think just to round this off, we need to manage our expectations of what is what the timeline is going to be. It's going to be a little bit longer and also manage expectations of what's going to be actually legalised. It is not going to be anything that contradicts the moped category of uh, maximum 30 miles an hour. I think we're going to see, as I said before, 350 watts, 15.5 miles per hour um, cut off on the engine, which I think is great. I think that's fine. That's what they should be used for. And then if you want anything faster, you should buy an e-moped um, with registration plates and everything else. Just stop riding on pavement. Stop maybe endangering children. Um, but yeah, the crackdown's here. I don't think we're going to stop it. And also, you know, I was watching the Electroheads video and on whether one of their staff had been convicted. They failed to mention in that video that that scooter is way above 15.5 miles an hour. Um, it is more classified as a moped. The, the young lady involved was fully aware of the illegality of it. She knew it was Ill illegal. Um, and having spoken to some QCs, I can tell you for the record that case. Um, won't probably go any further, they'll, they'll drop it. If they don't drop it, it's gonna set a dangerous precedent um, for booking other people and make it easier for the police to book other people. So I, I think it's a red herring as well, that just to keep people's hopes up um, when they need it. It's gonna happen, it's gonna be good, and we'll get a nice legal vehicle that we can all use. There are a few situations very similar to each other, and one of them I'm going to read. A subscriber says, I got hit by a car on a zebra crossing, still get points and a fine. Car was going 20 miles per hour while approaching a zebra crossing and I am at fault. Now I have the test on the 30th, which is pointless. And the saddest part is I was a moped rider up until I got hit and run. The car driver got away and the police stopped looking for him after two days. Now I'm on a bun and my career as a fire alarm engineer is on hold. All because I got hit by a car on a zebra crossing. Got full CBD and cancelled my insurance. I'm assuming this guy was hit by a car upon riding an electric scooter. but I'm presuming the same. I'm not sure. He doesn't quite make it clear or her. She doesn't make it clear. Um, it's very sad, actually. I think that's an awful thing. Um, but um, at the end of the day, I mean, if he if if you were on a if he was if he was on a motorized scooter with registration plates and he's riding it across he or she's riding it across a zebra crossing, then well, yeah, you shouldn't do that. That's just it's, it's got to stay on the road. He should have he or she should have pushed it across. If they were on if they were riding um, an e scooter across a, a zebra crossing, um, then you know, yes, the guy's guilty, but so's he or she for riding on it. So they're, they're all guilty. We have to remember that under the British Constitution, um, there are certain tenets we have to obey. And that is that the, the, the two main ones are that A, the law always has to be seen to be done. And B, that um, ignorance is no defence in the eyes of the law. Um, so even if you didn't know it was illegal, um, you should have checked first before you did something. Um, so had she or he checked, um, then they would have known it's illegal and therefore they shouldn't be doing it. Um, if they hadn't been doing it, they wouldn't have been hit. So therefore this would be irrelevant. The car driver is still as guilty as anybody else. And it's very sad that this, it, it harks back to our thing. We keep trying to point out that there's not enough information about what happens to you. 
people aren't, I think a lot of people aren't believing it. Um, it, it as we've discussed past, I think if we could put together in a park or whichever format, a, a, a general round table, um, not by Zoom or anything like that, where we all get people, elect if Electra heads could do it, do it, it'd be great. If Electra heads and say Mark from Personal Electric Transport, Tim Woods from the um, um, Electric Skateboard Channel, we all get in with and be interviewed by, to, jointly by Electra heads. I think that would be a great way of sort of get dispelling some of these myths um, and urban legends about ele personal electric transport not the company, the, the, the vehicles themselves. But unfortunately, yes, it's sad. And yes, that person's life has been temporarily ruined for a bit, but they're both guilty, unfortunately. Absolutely the same information with another subscriber, which says, I have been recently become the victim of a hit and run by a car driver while driving my e-scooter. I reported the crime to the police and they did nothing. Three weeks later, I got a letter telling me that they are prosecuting me and that I have to go to court. The situation is, you can see, absolutely the same. And there was another comment a couple of months ago that somebody was hit and was blamed. We need to warn our viewers that electric but scooter... your become... view is not my view, it's <laughs> your channel. Electric scooter become even much more dangerous because... If you got hit by somebody, you're going to be even blamed for the yeah. accident. It's double danger. Yeah, but I mean, let, let's take out the e-scooter. Let's, let's take an example that's not e-scooter related or road related. I go into Tesco's and nick a bottle of beer. Go running into the road and get hit by a car. But I, 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 I was legally crossing on a green light. Um, yes, the car driver's guilty. So like, I run across the road and... It, on a pelican crossing and it's on a green man and I go running across and I get hit by a car. You know, the car driver's guilty and he will get, he or she will get prosecuted, but I'm still also, it doesn't mean that I'm not guilty of stealing the bottle of beer. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, silly, isn't it? It's, it's, but this is what people don't think. One crime doesn't cancel out another crime. One crime doesn't cancel out the other crime when you're doing it. So, you know, you've got, it's almost like um, there was, there used to be an old, you know, if you've watched any Westerns, there was a term called outlaw, you're an outlaw. And what this meant was you're breaking the law so you can't rely on the law to defend you. And that's basically what you're doing when you're riding, when you ride an e-scooter, you are an outlaw. You accepted that, you know, that was, if you got hit or whatever, that was your, the outcome of what you were doing. It, well, you can't complain about it. Um, and that's what you're doing riding an e-scooter. You're breaking the law. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, not for much longer, but that's where it lies. Um, so, yeah, you, you got, you know, you've got no defence. Um, you know, the hit and run, very sad they didn't catch the person. And I really wish they had, because I don't like hit and run riders, drivers anyway. I think it's an awful thing. But, yeah, you, it doesn't cancel out your crime. All right, Ash. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, I think everybody has got lots of information about health and safety and so the situation about the electric scooters. Thank you very much again. Hope we will see you soon. Dimitri, thank you so much for giving me time and space on your channel to make a few comments. I'm sorry if I've upset anybody or burst anybody's bubbles. I, I assure you, as I said at the start, I'm all for legalization, but just safely. Um, and also... I, don't, I just want to dispel a few of the myths that are going around about them at the moment. I think we've done that. So I think we've done a good job. Um, but thank you for your time and your space on your channel. It's been much appreciated. All right. Thanks to Ash. And I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave your comment. And i am do all my best to get the answer on all your questions about the e-scooters in the UK. Let me ask you if in the next video I'll tell you about the worst five things happened to me in London during the past year. Would you be interested? I'm sure you will. By the way, I'm a very positive person, but I'm going to start from the worst five things happened to me in London. Please remember to leave your comment below. We are going to ask your questions to the expert in our next conversation.